biggest pivot for me in the past two years was finally filing my paperwork for my VA disability. And I had been putting that off. Bill, I put that off for 18 years. I kid you not. So in the interview, I'm completely honest. You guys asking me a series of questions. You know, what did I do in the military? Did I deploy? What was I exposed to in combat? And I'm just, I'm just the floodgates open. I'm telling him everything that I was experienced, everything I, I experienced when I deployed in the combat zone, everything I've experienced since then. And I got diagnosed with PTSD. So to this day, when I see a car disabled on the side of the road, when I'm driving down 380, the very first thought that crosses my head is I'm checking for mine, wire, booby trap. What does that vehicle look like? And is it going to explode on me? It still hits. I don't miss it. It's go, go, go. Like a go, go flow. And I'm almost known. And I told you so. When I throw these flows, like it's Rochambeau. And I ain't too close. It's Joe Smoke goes. And I'm on my grind. That is all the time. I do not do brace. That's right. I stay in dry. And look, I'm back with a little bit of that. And a little more cash than it came with. Ready that cat is out that bag. But I still ask the boy got skills. I don't need her. I don't need him. I don't need help with me. I got this. I can sing songs. I can spit raps. And I can do both. Even do this. Word. Support for the On The Stacks podcast comes from Montage Planning Partners. Partnerships like this make our community a better place to live and work. That's why Montage Planning Partners is proud to support the important work of On The Stacks. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies ask, what's your salary? At Montage Planning Partners, we ask, what's your story? We know building the right financial plan means looking at more than just money. That's why we start by asking the right questions, listening to what matters most to you, then guiding you every step of the way to help you live the life you want now and years from now. Plan your financial story with Montage Planning Partners with Northwestern Mutual, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Contact Montage Planning Partners today. Visit montageplanningpartners.com for further information and disclosures. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the pioneers of the portable wood-burning sauna. Did you know that using the sauna three to four times per week could reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50% and make you 60% less likely to experience Alzheimer's disease? That's why I've been a big fan of the sauna for years but having to go to a crowded gym to do it isn't ideal. And all the at-home options are bulky and expensive. That's why I only use the sweat tent for my sauna needs. It's the most storable and affordable wood-burning sauna on the market. It not only takes minutes to set up, but it can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in 30 minutes or less. So whether you're enjoying it yourself in your backyard, with friends, or in need of a reliable sauna on the go, sweat tent is your best choice for the most portable, storable, and enjoyable outdoor sauna experience. All On The Stacks listeners will receive $100 off when you use code OTS. Visit sweattent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code OTS at checkout. Again, that's sweattent.com to get $100 off with code OTS. Sweat Tent, helping you fire up your home wellness routine. This episode is brought to you by FitAF. If you haven't already noticed, I live and breathe entrepreneurship. Whether it's launching new ventures, attending pitch meetings, or mentoring budding entrepreneurs, my schedule is jam-packed. And that's where FitAF steps in. Their menu changes weekly, offering a variety of chef-inspired meals designed by nutrition experts using only the best quality ingredients, keeping me fueled and focused. Their vast selection of meals has you covered for all types of dietary restrictions and diet plans, including keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, and more. As an On The Stacks listener, enjoy our exclusive offer. Get 20% off your first order of seven meals or more when you use code OTS at checkout at fitafnutrition.com. Again, that's code OTS for 20% off your first order of seven meals or more at fitafnutrition.com. Healthy meals and seamless nutrition, keeping entrepreneurs at the top of their game. What's up, podcast? I'm your host, Bill Corcoran Jr. here in the MPP studio. Dr. Will Ramey, welcome back to the On The Stacks podcast. Round two, Bill. Here we go. Buckle up. I know. this is we're, It's about to get serious right now, I think, right? It is. It is. So, uh... You know, we, we talked and the first episode we had was a lot about business and, and um, you know, what I was trying to do to break into things. And here we are about, I don't know, two years. Yeah, it, it's it's actually the, the crazy part is, but I think by the time this episode comes out, it'll be like almost right around the two year mark. I was, you know, obviously you, you know, for anyone that's listening or watching that, you know, doesn't know Dr. Will Ramey and doesn't know Leadership Decoder or anything. Um, but Will was on the show previously, episode 128 or yeah, 128. Um, yeah, and it's it's been I can't believe it's been two years. A lot has transpired, right? So instead of oh marking things of on, on the calendar of days gone by, if you mark things of you know what's been accomplished or what's been been conducted, that two years has just been jam packed with adversity and achievement and you know entrepreneurship and, and things going on and uh, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to come back here and talk a little bit more about 
me and myself and and uh you know my story and we got t-shirt will to, with us today we got t-shirt will. i like so, t-shirt will yeah you know through my head the first episode was a lot about hey i'm starting my business what kind of brand image do i want it was kind of like we were on a first date almost right? it was like, it was I, you know i felt like <laughs> hey a little cat had the bracelet thing going on a little casual but yep. but serious but yeah uh, yeah so button down shirt and whatnot but this this time around i said you know if i'm gonna bring my authentic self i'm gonna bring what i'm usually wearing you know when i'm not in the office required to wear Button down shirt and khaki pants. You know, the IBM typical office uh, office yep. attire. So, yeah. yeah, you got t-shirt will. Not a lot of people get to experience t-shirt will. Mm-hmm. That's right. So I'm glad I'm glad we get to showcase t-shirt will, you know, to everybody and show show t-shirt will because, you know, not many people see, uh, see you know, this, you know, I'll say like a casual side, you know, you know not that you're not authentic and anything else, but, you know, it's uh, kind of like me over the years. Like, uh, you know, I'll use me as the example, right? Like, same thing, even like when we first met, like, I think I was even, I forget, I, uh, was I wearing a t-shirt or hoodie? That I might, I don't know, I might have been. But either way, like, you know, everybody I think that maybe has been following along for a long enough here, if they scroll back far enough in the episodes, I used to look just like you too. And even before that, like, going now I'm going back like a few years and then some, I used to wear suit and tie and I joke all the time, like I used to be suit guy. Yeah. You know, now I'm t-shirt, jeans, backwards hat um sneaker guy you can suffocate in that shirt and tie if you're not careful <laughs> for real yeah <laughs> um that's that's you know one of the biggest reasons i got out of it right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but uh no man it's great to it's great to have you back on and uh like you said it's been it's been so long uh, there's been so much that has transpired uh you're almost a year into your show at yeah. this point which yeah. is crazy that's too that's journey. you know by the time you know this this comes out like you're you're gonna be you're gonna be coming up on one year of leadership decoded so congratulations on that by oh, the way thank you so much the honest tax team's making it happen it's yeah a, it's a really truly a joy to be able to join this team and have a show where i can have a voice and share my voice and really it's important to me breaking down leadership principles and being able to give people actionable tactics steps that they can take to, to lead better whether that be in their work life in their home life and to have a platform to where I have a show to do that, which I never thought I would. That was never on the, oh, must have, must have own podcast list. That came Isn't it out, crazy to think about? It is. That came out through conversations with you it and, and, uh, yeah. and Jimmy and, and going back and forth on, hey, what could this be and what could this do and how can I help people? Yeah. And really, I think that was probably one of the first steps where I started to merge what I was doing with my business and the show and really starting to intentionally think about what purpose I have and how I can serve others and how I can serve at my best and being able to have a show to where I can put information out and, and really help people lead better lives, lead their teams better at work. You know, even if there's one person, if there's one person each week that listens or watches and takes something away and puts it into practice, that to me is fulfilling work. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably get it all the time too. I mean, like I do even about your show. Like literally, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I share them with you most of the time. Like when people reach out and send, you know, send, you know, uh, in messages like, Hey, you know, I'm listening to the show, watching the show, just telling you, uh, you know, even though Brian's part of the team, uh, you know, he, every week that he's here, he's, he's constantly saying, Hey, Will's episode this week was great. You know, like, cause you know, he's usually in here on Thursdays. Okay. Your episodes come out on Tuesdays. Usually by Thursday, Brian has usually watched the episode. That's awesome. And he comments on it almost, almost every week, you know? Um, but you know, like I said, I'm sure it probably happens to you way more frequent now too. Um, you know, like even before this, you know, Eric and I were sitting here before, you know, you came in and, uh, I had a message from somebody I didn't know on Facebook and just sent me like a, Hey, you know, I love what you're doing. I love the podcast. Again, somebody I can just don't know, you know, somebody just, just happened to just discover the show. Like, think about that. Like, like somebody literally just discovered the show for the first time, like this week. Yeah. And again, you know, he's a local, local guy. Right. But again, no clue who he is. He obviously didn't know who I was. And he just sent like a nice message like, Hey, cool. Keep up the good work. And it's just like, it's so cool to, it's cool to get that, you know, and that's obviously, you know, we don't do it for, you know, that pat on the back, but it just goes to show and improves exactly what you said. It's just like, Hey, if it can help one person, that's a win, you know? And, yeah. and I'm sure like, you know, as time has gone by, it's, you know, all the time now it's an one, one more person, one more person, one more person. And like, you know, like I said, like it happens to me, you know, very frequently now, like literally an hour before we started this. I'm re- I was I was reading it off to Eric because I I just got it. I'm like, who the hell is this? You know? Yeah. Um, but well, it's cool. It's that's cool to fuel, see. right? To me, that that's fuel to the fire. Yeah. You know? It means you're doing it, doing something right. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're reaching. You're reaching somebody. You're having a positive impact. And to me, that's that's the end goal. How do you mm-hmm. have positive impact? Like when when we talked about the idea of 
Like what is OTS wanting to do and where you're wanting to grow? Mm-hmm. You know, a family of shows was, was it. And because of who you are and the team that you're assembling and the values you're bringing, have all that kind of line up. I jumped at it because I knew in the, in the hands of the OTS team, Leadership Decoded is going to be a show that can impact people for the better. Mm-hmm. And that one person a week or that one person that comes, you know, comes to you, for me, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire. It's like, yep, let's keep going. Here's the next ideas that we have. Here's what's, here's what's current. Here's what's happening. Here's what's trending in leadership or whatever it may be. So it, it really does uh, you know, kind of accelerate what you're wanting to do and where you want to take things. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, since, you know, from, from two years ago till now, since, you know, when you're on the show the first time, I mean, you know, you've grown so much, you know, personally, professionally. Uh, and I'd love to just kind of talk a little bit about that, like kind of like, you know, where you were then, kind of where you're at now, you know, uh, maybe, you know, some self-discovery stuff, just, you know, learning about, you know, yourself and just, you know, doing, you know, this content. Like, again, like, even before you said it a few minutes ago, like you never thought you would have been doing this type of stuff. And it's like, you know, obviously, I'm sure it's had an impact on, on you in a, in, a, in a good way, like, you know, both per- personally and professionally. And uh, I just think it's so cool. And it's 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 uh, it's great to just be able to talk about, you know, these these and have these types of conversations, because I feel like a lot of times people won't or don't or you know, just they, they people don't want to put themselves out there as much as, you know, maybe the next guy. But I think it's, I think it's important to, to be able to do that in, in whatever shape or form that means to you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think everybody, you know, to a degree, you know, wants to share something about themselves, whatever it is. Right. Um, but again, it's always like, kind of like, it needs to be like the right place, right time. Like, and for example, like we were talking before I came on and you were, you were asking me, you're like, Hey, Remember when you, you know, you did your episode, episode 200, and you were asking me like, hey, how'd you feel going on before that? And I'm just like, man, it was like a whirlwind, right? Like it was emotional. And like, you know, it's like, it's weird to think about because it really wasn't that long ago. It was only a few months ago. Um, But like at the time when I'm talking about it and talking, you know, really opening up about a lot of what has been going on in my life and not that I was hiding anything, but some of the stuff I couldn't talk about like legally, but otherwise, you know, um, there was just so much to unpack, you know, and it's like, it's a little easier to talk about now. Um you know, I'll say then it was on that episode, uh, but you know, all good. And like, it was kind of like the, the way I explained it, it was like, it was like the weight of the world off my shoulders. I think after afterwards, it was just like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, like it just has that like feeling, um, you know, and I'm sure you probably have felt a similar type feeling at some points. You know, I feel like everyone has, you know, at something, whether, you know, opening, opening a, a new chapter in their life, closing, closing a chapter, just all that, those types of transitions. And, you know, again, now that, you know, we've, we've known each other for a couple of years and, you know, you're, you're a year, you know, into this journey with your podcast, like there's just been so much that has gone on. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, I appreciate the, the opportunity to kind of open up here and I tell you, your episode really, you know, sparked the idea in me on, on coming back to the show and really opening the door and opening myself up to what's been happening in my, in my life professionally and personally. So professionally, you know, just with the, with the podcast and with the business, things have been good, but that has spawned this this journey for me to understand more about who I am and how can I bring myself to my work. And you know, the, probably the the biggest the biggest pivot for me in the past two years was finally filing my paperwork for my VA disability. And I had been putting that off. Bill, I put that off for eighteen years. I kid you not. The I left the active duty in 2006, and I was in the reserves from 2006 to 2011, so I was still in service. But when I first left active duty, it was the first opportunity I had to, you know, go through that process of of uh, you know filing for disability. And in my head, I said, "Hey, it's a broken system." I've heard horror stories of people uh, with the VA. I looked myself up and down. I said, "I'm fine. Whatever I'm dealing with, I can deal with. I don't want to. I don't want to clog a broken system." And thankfully, you know, I had friends, really good friends. Some were were veterans as well that really pushed me to, hey, file your paperwork. This isn't this is so you can you can get help. It's so you can get, you know, the treatment that you need or or what you you know whatever it is you need to take care of yourself. It's not that you're clogging a system. It's you're getting something that you're entitled to that's going to help do some good. So, best friend in the world. Shout out Ethan Wilson, retired Navy chief. Uh, really pushed me into the direction of, of why I wanted to, or, or, or he pushed me in the direction of filing. And uh, I had another good friend of mine at, uh, at work, Heather Fiedler, 
who's you know military spouse and she kind of put the cap on it and got me got me a point of contact to get me started so a year and a half ago I put in my claim and part of the process is you have to you have to identify everything that's wrong with you everything that happened in service well you know blood pressure was 160 over 100 consistently so at 42 years old walking around with 160 over 100 blood pressure is not good right yeah so, i mean you look like a, i mean on the, you know just from the outside looking like you look like a healthy guy right so again in my head hey there's nothing wrong well this is internal it is wrong and you know it was first diagnosed when i was in the military um but the the biggest thing was the mental well-being so i'm sitting here filling out my paperwork and i'm looking at everything that i've dealt with and i'm trying to assess you know things that are going on or actions or behaviors that i have and i i put on my paperwork you know post traumatic stress disorder ptsd which in my head i'm like ah, I, I, I don't i don't i don't think i don't think i'm going to get that i don't think i have this but you know talking to talking to my friends describing what i'm going through describing things that have occurred in my past and how i've reacted they said, put it down and at least have a meeting with a, with a doctor. To be to, evaluated? Right, to be evaluated. And if they find nothing, they find nothing. But if they find something, then you can get the help that you need. And I, I remember the uh, day before my appointment, my wife told me, be honest. Because she knows I will, I will keep in, I will compartmentalize, I will... Like a lot of guys do, right? Yeah, which is typical. A lot of guys do because I don't know, if, you know for me it was... Well if, well, if I admit to myself that I have a problem, then it exists. Then now it's real. If I don't acknowledge it, it's not there. And that's just a, a big, a big uh, fallacy that we, we, you know, a lot of people carry around, especially, especially men, especially men in the military. Yeah. Um. So I put it down the day before the interview. She tells me to be honest. So in the interview, I'm completely honest. The guy's asking me a series of questions. You know, what did I do in the military? Did I deploy? What was I exposed to in combat? And I'm just, I'm just the floodgates open. I'm telling him everything that I was experienced, everything I, I experienced you know, when I deployed in the combat zone, everything I've experienced since then. Um, and I got diagnosed with PTSD. And I'll tell you, the, the pivot point for me was when the diagnosis came in and it became real. And it was like a weight was lifted because now I have this understanding, oh, well, maybe that's why I behave this way, or maybe that's why I always, you know, posture myself this way in a store. That's why I always, you know, do X, Y. So I had a lot of more, I had a lot of explanations for some of the behaviors that I couldn't explain before. Right, like a lot of reactionary things in different situations. Irritability, hyper, you know, so, so the two things that came up was hypervigilance and hyperarousal. So hypervigilance of, you know, for me, when I drive down the road, so part of my job in the military was to lead a team that, um, went out on the main supply routes when we were deployed and we would pick up damaged or destroyed weapon systems and vehicles. We were a ma called a maintenance recovery team. So we were out on the, we were out on the roads. We were you know driving certain ways. Every, every pothole, every garbage pile, every vehicle on the side of a road was a potential improvised explosive device. So we became very tuned into being able to see things on the side of the road that were potential threats and assessing them quickly. So you were like hyper-focused on like, what's that? What's that? Right. What's right? Our survival depended on it in that context well nobody nobody goes back and and takes that away from you when yeah. you leave a combat zone right it doesn't go away no so to this day when i see a, a car disabled on the side of the road when i'm driving down 380 the very first thought that crosses my head is i'm checking for mine wire booby trap what's what's what does that vehicle look like and is it going to explode on me now that that thought is still there but it doesn't take over my life but it's still the first thought that comes up so that's that hyper that hyper vigilance. When I'm in a crowd, I have you've got an exit here, you've got an exit there, you've got a back door, and you've got a you've got a uh, in your back studio here in this studio, you've got a window on a first floor entrance. How many people live their lives thinking that way? Yeah, not many. That yeah, unless you were in the military, right? Probably. So so I so I care. So those things that I just thought were hey, you know, doesn't this everybody, is, doesn't this is normal. Doesn't everybody yeah. assess vehicles on the side of the road for for improvised <laughs> right. explosive devices? Doesn't, right. Doesn't everybody look for fifteen different exits when they're in a when they're you know outside of their own house? So those type things, uh, the 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 snowball, and this is probably the one that hit me the most is um, the irritability and the the quick 
trigger temper at home, specifically at home, of things that would normally roll off somebody else's back. Like if, if my kid did something that was, I thought was, hey, you know, this is something that needs discipline, but they came back with a, with a different answer. So I just had in certain situations, very quick trigger. And that anger would build with no apparent reason to the point of me exploding, you know, yelling, raised voice, quick, you know, quick movement, quick action. And, uh, it hit a, it hit a point where I'm saying, well, this isn't normal. What's what's causing this? And it, it is that sense of control. It is that sense of um, needing to be in control of situations because your life depended on, or that's the that's the context that you're in. So when I got the diagnosis, to me it was like a light bulb moment of, okay, this has been confirmed. So it's no longer to me it's no longer an if this exists, it exists. Now what am I going to do about it? So seeking treatment, um, finding, finding help, finding outlets, doing a lot of research. It led me to do a lot of research of um, alternative therapies. So I don't, I don't do doctors. I, it's, it's, I grew up that way. I don't like to take pills, or medic, you know, medicine if I don't have to. I, 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 I grown through things. So you know, when you talk about PTSD and you talk about you know, hypervigilance, hyper uh, arousal of like loud noises, things like that, that'll, that'll – make you jerk and react quickly um you know if you look at at the initial therapies a lot of it is cognitive behavioral therapy you know, talking to a therapist and then the second thing that gets listed is antidepressants like well i don't want to go on antidepressants how can i how can i you know try to work through this yeah, actually myself? maybe you know not necessarily fix it but uh not just put a band-aid over over what's actually going on because right. a lot of times you know like you said like medication just sort of it doesn't it may alleviate what's happening, but really it's just sort of covering up what's happening. Right. So, I, so I'm no expert. So whatever works for you works for you. Sure. But I know for me, taking a pill wasn't going to be the answer to my problems. I wanted to try to do something different. So I got into um, a lot of research. So thankfully, I have access to some some university libraries through my like you know role as an adjunct professor. And you've done a little research before. So I've like done research yeah. before. You get my doctor. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay, let me go find out some things yep. that are going on. I talked to some, you know, some, some friends of mine and I found, you know, there's a veterans group out in California that does, um, stand up paddle boarding. So I said, well, geez, let's, let's, what, how does this link? And oh, it, yeah, you brought that with you today when you came in. I mean, I know it was just raining the other day, but you came in and I was like, Will, like, did you paddle boat yeah, here? Like, right. yeah, so I actually yeah. have in the back, yeah. I keep it. It's in my car. I was out on the lake yesterday. So what I found was, hey, stand up paddle boarding has, it puts you in a, a kind of a meditative state because it's this repetitive, low impact exertion of exercise. When did you start doing this? A year and a half ago. Oh, okay. So shortly after my, shortly after my diagnosis, I, I did the research and I said, hey, for 500 bucks, I got a full kit. I have a lake in my community. So I'm taking all the barriers to excuses away. It's a five minute drive. I've got a pump to blow this thing up. I can be on the water in less than five minutes. It gets me outdoors, vitamins, vitamin D, sunshine, blue skies, and I get to be on the water, which has been shown to have therapeutic uh, properties, right? So when you're on the water, you're floating, you're doing a low-level exertion, it releases the same chemicals in your body as an antidepressant. Mm. So serotonin, um, you, know, you get into to some of those dopamine uh, releases. So instead of taking a pill, I'm using Mother Nature, I'm using exercise and fresh air and you get into this, you get into this state of balance figuratively and literally you get into a state of, I can't concentrate on anything else because I don't want to fall off this board. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you get into this. So I discovered, I discovered stand up paddleboarding. It's become such a, uh, such a pertinent part of important part of my, my healing process and how I manage the irritability, the temper, the stress in my day. And I asked a million dollar question, uh, last week, have you noticed a difference in my irritability and how I handle, you know, some situations? Are you asking yourself this or no, you, I asked my wife. wife. Okay. I was going to say, I said, have you noticed? And so I'm like, Hey, I have been taught you don't ask a question you don't want an answer to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Or you don't ask a question. You're, you don't already yeah. think you know the answer yeah. to, but I asked and I got back. Yes. A thousand percent. And I said, I think it's the paddle boarding. I take the board out three times a week and I'm mellow. I'm 
letting things roll off my back, um, taking things in stride. So to me, the research that that veterans group did, and they offered trips, and they 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 backed it with research from people who were working with you know, combat deployed veterans, and they found this alternative therapy doesn't take a doesn't take a pill, and when you do it in a group setting, you know what they find is you, you're getting some of that camaraderie back that you that you may have missed in the military. Mm, yeah, that makes right? sense. So I got my kids interested. So now it's become a hey, this is good for dad for. One now set it's of a reasons. family thing. Now too. it's a family thing. The kids want to go and they want to learn. So it gives me that sense of purpose and that sense of, you know, being able to teach them and, and have them involved in something that's healthy and, you know, a good good use of time. But the, um, you know, all of that positivity stemmed for me overcoming my fear of being diagnosed. So if I wouldn't have taken that step, if I wouldn't have, you know, swallowed my my pride, so to speak, of I can handle this on my own. If I wouldn't have taken that step, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have uh, verified what I kind of already thought or kind of already knew, and I wouldn't have then taken the second step on on what I can do to really get after it, mm-hmm. because it, it wasn't real. So if it's not real, I don't have to action it. But when it became real, now I now I can do something with it, and that was that was powerful for me. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, because it's you know it's, again it's one of those things. I mean, what was it? Eighteen years. 18 years, 18 years. So like for 18 years, you're, you're, you know, you're probably thinking like a little something, you know, but again, like didn't want to talk about it or say, because like you said before, if you say it or talk about it, then it's like, okay, this is a real thing. But deep down inside, you probably all this time felt like, ah, it's probably there, but I'm not doing anything about it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I'm like, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's this I'm reason. That's ah, a I'm bad fine. day. Oh, yeah. it's that reason. Like I would push reasons off. I'm like, yeah, no, it, you know. Yeah. And 18 years, that's a long time. Yeah. That's a real long time. It was too long. Yeah, it, it was too it was too long for me to carry that on my own. It was too long for my my family to see that and and to because it you know it impacts them too for sure. Like who I am and how I show up, it impacts them. It impacts the work that I do with teams. So if I'm going to go out and do workshops and help leaders lead at their best, I mean there's you know there's the fundamentals of of how how you can behave at work and how you lead at work, but there's also that how do you take care of yourself and how do you understand what's going on and what you may be carrying outside. So bringing that in, right? So having gone through that and experienced it myself, now I'm able to bring that into the work that I do. So I'm, I'm arming myself with even more oh, yeah. you know, capabilities to help people, yeah. which is what, what it's all about anyway. Yeah, it makes, it makes everything you do probably so much more fulfilling. And when you're able to, now you're able to, you know, talk about this. And like you said, like, as you know, over the last couple of years, you know, sort of like, you know, refining like your, your purpose and following, you know, like your passion and what you love to do and incorporating, you know, some of this and being able to now talk about it, like you said, like it'll further help your mission, not only with, you know, not just that there's, you know, there's all the leadership stuff, right? But then this just also now adds a whole nother dimension to, I think, what you do and what you're able to offer and talk about, because, you know, it's one thing to talk about leadership, but then it's another thing to really uh, work in all of your real world, real world experiences, which I know you have. But like now, it's like you've taken it to another level. Yeah, what what it has allowed me to do is be comfortable in my own skin. And that, if you think about that for a second, imagine not being comfortable in your own skin, in your own body, in your own self. Yeah, and a lot of people are afraid to talk about that too. Oh, they are. Because I think a lot, I think there's a lot more people in the world. Doesn't matter, if, you know. Doesn't matter who you are, what you do. That probably feel some similar way, whether they're a veteran or not, or whether they had some other type of trauma in their life that they may have, sure. you know, PTSD from something, right? Maybe it's a car accident, you know, maybe it's a relationship thing with, you know, with somebody, you know, anyone. Um, but again, like there's you know, a lot of people probably are thinking it, but don't really want to talk about it or don't want to like, you know, like you said, like vocalize, like, hey, all right, I think maybe now's the time to yeah. to talk about this. Yeah. And and that's yeah, PTSD it's not it's not a veteran specific problem like you said. It it's it's mental health and mental well-being mm-hmm. and, and obviously more prevalent and and you know in Oh, sure, military, absolutely, but, right, because you're you're yeah. putting yourself in a specific environment. And like I said, I've been I've been in environments where I've been shot at and where I've where I've had explosives go off, you know, in and around my team and you know, I, I signed up and volunteered for that and that's that's a okay. I have no regrets about that whatsoever. Uh but when we have the conversation of mental health and mental well-being uh, is a conversation that needs to be had across all platforms. So when I can get to the point of being comfortable in my own skin and comfortable in my own self, then I can I can bring even more of myself to the work that I do. 
I can bring even more of myself to the work and find out who am I serving, what is my purpose. So it, it lets me be more versatile with the teams that I work with, the organizations I work with, because I can I can help and I can draw from a wider range of experiences. Um, you know, which which to me is fulfilling. It's not just happiness in the moment. It's content and fulfillment, which is something bigger than just being happy with the work that you're doing. Yeah. How does it feel now? You know, you're kind of on the other side of it, I'll say, right? Maybe not entirely. And you're obviously, you're still probably working on it and you'll probably still always be working on it. And like, and that's normal and okay. And, um, but how does it now feel to sort of be on the other side of like, oh, okay. Like looking back at yourself all those years and like now that you, you got the help you needed, you got the disability, you're doing the paddle boarding, you're doing this, you're incorporating a lot of this into, you know, your, your, your teachings. And then, and even here now, like you're talking about it now, like how does it feel now to be on this side of all of that? Yeah, it feels great, right? It feels great because before it was like, I was hiding in the shadows and if somebody were to bring the conversation up, it's like, yeah, that's not me. I would divert conversation and I'd, and I'd go someplace else, which is, which is not, you know, authentic. It's not, um, you know, helpful. So being on the other side of it, now I can have a whole other conversation. Now I can have a whole uh, different type of, of perspective on, on life and things. I can open up and have conversations about, hey, in order for me to go do this, we need to prep and I need to have this space or this time or I need to you know, set my boundary or I need to be able to do X, Y, and Z, which then I can help coach others through and help, help develop others through. So you know, it really has opened up a gate of uh, clarity, of uh, connection with people in a, in a very different way than before. Yeah. I think PTSD is like one of those things that's so, it's so often overlooked and I'm not really sure why. Um, maybe, you know, a little bit more than I do, but, uh, it's just, it's one of those things I think, I think probably because, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably one of those things that you just think to yourself, like, ah, I don't have that. That's not me. A hundred percent. Is that it? That's it. So, so for years, for years, it was, well, I'm not waking up with nightmares and I'm not, I'm not, you know, um, getting this, this debilitating feeling in, in public. So I'm, I, I must not have it. I think what, what's what's so profound about PTSD is the wide range of symptoms and the wide um, variety of its in, intenseness, right? So it can be on one end of the spectrum a very a very debilitating, you know, psychological uh, state of being, and it can be on the other end of a spectrum that it shows up in, in you know smaller different ways of people that are just continuously there underneath the surface but are gnawing away at you. And that's, that's where I felt was more towards that end of the spectrum. So I just dismissed it as, oh, no, this isn't something I have or something I need to treat or something I need to do something about because I'm not on the... Yeah, it know, wasn't I, like I, extreme, I, right? Like, like it, the it was Hollywood just... or the stereotypes that people get. And that's what, you know, you, you start to read about employers and you start to read about people and think, oh, you're, oh, you're in the military, oh, you must have PTSD. Well, that's not the case either. Or you're in the military, you have PTSD, you, you must be in, in... And we want to try to put you in a box... We want to try to put you in this. Um, yeah, there's no one size fits all, and there's not. And I think that's what the you know what the uh, the difficulty is about understanding more about what this means and how to how to handle it is because it is such a wide range, and there's not a one size fits all solution. There's not a one size fits all situation. There's not a one size fits all yeah. diagnosis. Yeah, and I think partly like kind of like you said, like you know, um, I, I guess probably because it's, it's it might be hard to understand whether you yourself have it or just in general, right? Because like when you think about it, you know, you think of like war movies and stuff and, you, and, and then and then um, say like it's a movie, you know, a guy comes back home or a girl comes back home, right? And they have these crazy outrages of whatever. And it's it's like, I don't want to say like it's it, it in movies, it's obviously um, there's more extreme cases in the movie because they have to because it has to be, it's a movie, right? Right. But like obviously in a movie, they're not going to talk about the guy that silently struggled for 18 years because, you know, I don't want to say that's not exciting, but it's just like, it's just like little, it's just like little tiny bits every day for you Yeah. that obviously add up. Whereas like, like you said, you didn't have like the extreme, this one end. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe some days, you know, maybe had worse days than others, but like, you know, probably oftentimes and not, it's more so just like a little tiny bit, but that little tiny bit every day, day in and day out for however many years it goes untreated really adds up. Well, sure. It's like the, the death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, when you have something that's debilitating and it's hard for people to, to overcome that, it's hard for some people to get, you know, treatment and help that they need. And it's, it's tragic seeing, um, you know, the news reports of 
veterans committing suicide in the VA parking lot because their mental health appointment was canceled for the third time. That's that happens. That's on the, the, the very far end, which is why our system needs fixed. And, I, I, and I'm, I'm not well versed enough to go in and discuss that at, at any length of detail. I just know that those, those things have happened. The other end of the spectrum is that 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 teeny tiny, you know, that cut that you get that you keep picking out a little bit that will fester into something that over time, you know, will, will turn into something bigger because it's left unchecked. And the stigma, speaking from experience, the stigma I attached to it got in my way of, of having a conversation about it. The, well, what do I do with this if I am diagnosed got in the way of me even wanting to find out. But I hit a point in my life where it was, it was time. And I wanted to, to try to, you know, be a positive story and be a positive example of here's what we can do and here's what we can still accomplish even though, you know, we might be walking around carrying this weight. And it's just been so transformational understanding, you know, more about it and, and seeing the correlations that pop up with feeling a certain way, behaving a certain way, and then not doing something about it compared to feeling a certain way, understanding what that might be connected to and understanding, hey, here's what I can do about it to stop it, mitigate it, prevent the impact and, and uh, outcome. I used to just go on the apology tour. Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have been so irritated. That's my fault. You know, please, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. What I find myself doing now is being able to understand and, and feel those emotions come up and then have something, have something to do to bring it back down before I have to go on the apology tour because I, yeah, yeah. I acted yeah. sorry I did that. Yeah. That, right. right. Um, but the other thing too, is that, you know, you don't want to go around wearing a sign. And so you've got to be able to, you know, to be in situations and, and overcome them. I was in a situation, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my own experiences at work have, have drove me to want to do my leadership and team development training because I want to help people lead in a positive manner. So now, you know, looking back and reflecting on, you know, what I'm carrying around behaviorally and psychologically compared to some situations I've been in at work, I'm like, yep, I can see that. Yep, that's, I can see that correlation. I was in a situation at work one time where we were, you know, talking about, you know, talking about a change. And uh, you can tell that the, the senior person in the room wanted a specific change and he, he really wasn't wanting to hear what we had to say. But he kept asking a question. So I kept trying to answer and then he would cut me off. And he kept asking a question. And I kept trying to answer. And he cut me off. And so here I am, like, I'm feeling it. My veins are popping in my neck. The veins are popping in my head. I'm chewing down. And it comes back to this feeling of I need to have control. And if I don't have control, something bad is going to happen. So my, what, I, what I've learned and what I've experienced in the military is my fight or flight is not flight. <laughs> it's fight. Because I needed to have that skill set. I needed to have that behavior to be successful leading my team in the military, multiple teams I've led. Well, again, that translates into work in the, in the civilian world too. So here's this guy poking, 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 poking. And I finally said, I snapped right back at him. And I said something to the effect of, you keep answering, asking me a question. You keep cutting me off. Do you want the answer or do you want to give me the answer? And then he threatened me. He sounds something effective. You don't want to be on my list. And then I came right back at him. Now, here I am. He's my boss's boss. I have my boss trying to, he's under, literally, Bill, he's under the table, yeah, kicking my he, leg. Yeah, he's crawling, he's crawling up. Uh, oh, no. And I was so, I was tunnel visioned in that moment. And I told the guy, you want to fire me? You want to move me? Go ahead. But you're not going to ask me a question and cut me off. If you want to sit here calmly, and listen to the answer and have a civil conversation, we can do that. Ooh. <laughs> I got you know, thrown out of the office, I think, at that point. A few days later, an apology was given. Now I'm going back you know, about five, five years. But I knew in that moment, I, hadn't, I had not equipped myself to pull back. I stayed as calm as I could, but I was so locked in because of that, because of that behavior, because of that, that feeling. Fight. Yeah, that that fight. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll have it with you. Now I know, like, hey, when I start to feel those things, like, I can do a simple box breathing in the moment. Or I've learned, hey, I can, I need to step back and disengage. Not the right time to have the conversation. Can we circle back here in 30 minutes? 
whatever I can do to get myself out of the situation. Because I fear if he would have escalated again, I would have escalated again. Now I'm in this cycle, right? Because of, because of how I think and because of those thought patterns, because I'm trying to protect myself. Well, now I can, now I can experience and acknowledge a feeling and acknowledge a positive response to break that cycle, right? So it's those small things that show up. And so over the past two years, having these discoveries and revolutions of, you know, through my research, why do people lead, you know, with toxic leadership styles? through my understanding more of kind of like the behavioral things that are happening, understanding myself more of behavioral things that are happening and having gone through this journey of... On the Stacks will be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Elevation Wellness, NEPA's premier wellness center located on Monday Street in Wilkes-Barre. From pro athletes to busy parents, Elevation Wellness is leading the conversation when it comes to bettering your health through integrative medicine. Founded by NEPA native Louis Helmecki, Elevation Wellness offers physician-formulated and guided treatments that are administered by registered nurses. To learn more about how you can experience the benefits of IV vitamin therapy, multivitamin booster shots, non-invasive aesthetics, or peptide, NAD, red light, and compression therapy, visit elevation-wellness.com or follow them on Instagram at elevationwellnessnepa. All On The Stacks listeners will receive 10% off their first purchase with code STACKS at checkout. Call 570-762-9400 or visit elevation-wellness.com to book your appointment today. Elevation Wellness, taking your health to new heights. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his burn board offers a low-impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. We drive the same roads you drive. We face the same danger you face. When you're involved in a car or a truck crash, it's personal. Because we live here and raise our families here. We are invested here. To learn more, visit Anzalone Law Offices online at anzalonelaw.com. And now we're back on the stacks. Needing to find positive outlets and positive, uh, you know, um, ways to cope with stress and behavior, because of my own self, I can incorporate that into the work that I do. So it's like all these roads are coming together, and I wouldn't have had that one avenue had I not gone through the process. Yeah. Wow. It's really it's really powerful now to like you know first of all like I didn't know a lot of this about you number one um, so I appreciate you I don't let a lot sure. of people in but but yeah. you know we're, yeah. we're we're getting there and that's part yeah. of, that's part of uh, yeah it's our second date right it is, yeah. yeah right yeah it's a little more casual yeah. this time yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, did I have the hat last time I don't know I don't think so no um, but yeah 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 we're both way more casual now um, but no it's it, it it is it's cool to be able to you know see and understand this transformation about you obviously you know we've known each other for a couple of years now but you know again like. A lot of this, you know, I didn't really, you know, I didn't know. Like, I just look, you just look at you, you're like, hey, well put together guy, successful, great leader. It's like, hey, he's got it all together. It's all good, you know? And I think that's the misconception that a lot of people have about a lot of other people. You know, you just don't realize, right? Like, cause you, like you, you know, like you said, you just go around sort of carrying that burden, you know, without talking about it to, to anyone, yeah. right? And then, like, when you finally do, you know, then you're able to finally sort of get past that, like, oh, I don't want to talk to anybody. Then you get, you know, get the help. And and now you can talk to probably almost anyone about it, 
You know what I mean? Like, you know, in conversation, like obviously if you're comfortable enough sharing, you know, like with somebody like me on a podcast or whatever, but like, you know, I'm sure like there's, you probably had other conversations with your friends or family or whomever at some point, you know, you know, now that you're on the other side of the fence, like, oh yeah, man, I feel so much better. I was able to do this and that. And here's how I did it, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's really cool to see, to see that transformation, especially, you know, you know, being that, you know, with you, with, you know, with the podcast and how much we've worked together over, you know, over the last year, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool to, to see and actually like understand the transformation, you know, that, yeah. that, that you've, that you've gone through. Um, and you know, like I said, it's, it's one of those things that most people won't talk about, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be, you know, a PTSD. It could just be, you know, anything that anyone's internalizing, you know, a lot of people just go through their entire lives without talking about sure. whatever that may be. Yeah. So and they, they miss an opportunity to connect or they miss an opportunity to gain perspective. And I was doing, I was missing that. And you might come out on the other side better for it. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, like, look at, like, look at you, like you said, like your business, like your business thrived this year, right? Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it did, uh, you know, two X better than the previous year and, and well beyond my expectation. But I, I attribute a big part of that to me being able to open up, be vulnerable, be more of myself, uh, and bring what I'm learning, you know, my experience and education to the work that I do. Yeah. Uh, and doing it in a fun manner. Which mm-hmm. is, <laughs> yeah, which it could be hard to do sometimes. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's funny how you, the way you just said that, cause it just reminded me too, like somebody, I was messaging an old friend on LinkedIn just last week and hadn't spoken to him in years. I don't even know the last time I spoke to him. It's been a few years or the, and then some, right. And I was like, Hey man, how you doing? Just, you know, whatever, catch it up. There's something that made me think of him. So I just figured I'd send him a message and you know, he just replies back. Oh, Hey Bill. Hey, great to hear from you. He's like, Oh, by the way. He's like, I listened to episode 200 of you yourself yeah. on the podcast. And he didn't even say like whether he listened or not to any other episode ever. Right. You know, now again, we're well over 200 at this point, but he says to me, Hey, like I, I listened to that episode with you, you know, and, and all the stuff you've been through. He's like, and uh, he goes, it sucked me in, you know I mean? Like, Oh, like, Oh, I had to, like, I watch it. Like I had to see, like, I had to, you know, hear like, you know what it was. He's like, it sucked me in. He's like, and man, wow, that was so powerful. I'm glad I'm glad you're good. Like, I'm glad you're able to share all that and all that. And it just goes to show like exactly what you just said. Like when you're able to now sort of be on the, that other side of it, um, people can relate to you so much more. Yeah. You know, and now again, like I just struck up a conversation. Now, this was just purely through messenger, like on LinkedIn, just struck up a conversation with a, you know, an old friend and he immediately brought that up and was like, Hey man, that was, that was great. Like That's that was awesome. awesome. Like good for, good for you. And it's like, now, now it's like, Hey, we, we connected on a whole new level. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that's what I think people might be, you know, might be missing about like this, this whole conversation is what's to come on the outside of you getting the help you need and, and having the conversations with the right people. Because on the other side of it is your thriving business is a more fulfilling life is better, deeper connections, whether it's, you know, family or not friends, family, coworkers, all that, like there's so much more on the other side of that fence. And I know it's probably very hard for someone to see when they're in that moment. Cause we, you know, we've all been there a lot, you know, you, you know, my stories, you know, and I, you know, obviously I know, you know, a bit of years now, but when you're in that moment before you get that help, it is sometimes hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. But I think by somebody like you or me or whoever it is sharing their experience and you know, Hey, it's possible. And like, here's, here's what I'm able to do now. And what I'm able to accomplish now and my life's never been better. And I know it's probably, again, it's probably very hard for some people to grasp that, especially when, when you're in the moment, whether you're depressed or whatever it is, it's very, I, I get it. Yeah. Like it's very, 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 very hard to be like, nah, that's not going to work for me. Nah, like it'll never be better. But like, there are ways you just have to figure out your way, however that is. And you know, for you, obviously, you know, getting the help, but then the paddle boarding and the rest is history. Yeah. And I, I bring that into my work. So the, the work that I do is helping teams develop leadership capabilities and helping teams develop, you know, better dynamics. So what we get into a lot are things like cohesion and communication and building trust and, um, you know, being able to speak to one another and, and, and work together as a team. So what I found is, you know, before I went through this, this journey with my work, I was very technically proficient. I was able to research and have the academic answer and the academic approach. And here's what research says about, uh, team cohesion. Here's what research says about team empowerment and how you should build it, which, okay, that's great and, and 
I can translate yeah, that to people. Yeah. It's needed, yep. and it's it's not just my opinion. It's yep. it's it's grounded in in science and social science. Okay, but what took me to the next level was being able to be comfortable sharing my stories in a relatable way to tie things together. And I just got that feedback recently from somebody who said, "Hey, when you present, you have a way of being able to break down the academic." you know, terms, the academic uh, knowledge and information, but share it in a way that's relatable that people can grasp onto. And when you share your, t- your stories about time in the military or leading business teams, that makes it even more powerful. And what I found was when I became more comfortable in my own skin, when I became more comfortable being myself on stage or in those uh, workshops, then I was able to speak about these stories. I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip a part. I wouldn't say, eh, they don't need to know that. Or, oh, this is too emotional. This may be too, you know too emotional for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it out. What I found was I'm 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 robbing my audience of that moment of yeah, that, that connection. ability to connect and feel a topic. And if you feel a topic, then you're gonna take action on it. So I can give you the very sterile, you know, definitions of things. And here's what research says to do. And here's the action steps you can take. But if I can connect those dots and make you feel a certain way about why it's important to listen with empathy as a leader, why it's important to build trust with one another, why is it important to work cohesively as a team. If I can make you feel that and bring your story out by sharing my story, it takes vulnerability to do that first. I have that now because I've, I've started to really embrace and think about well-being and stress and wellness and getting comfortable talking through that. I had a, uh, a client the other day I worked with. It was... Um, a group of non-tenure track uh, STEM faculty members. And the topic of conversation was rebuilding your power. And we talked about how, how you can use power sources at work, proactive coping, and navigating politics of change. At the end of the, the uh, workshop, I wanted to close. And I always try to close with a personal experience. And I have our oldest daughter, Alexandra, love her to pieces, is studying to be an astrophysicist. She's going into her junior year of college down at Embry-Riddle University. So here I am. I met two astrophysicists that day. I'm in a room full of STEM, non-tenure track faculty members. I'm like, how can I bring this home? I've got to open up. So I I shared with them, it's important for you to understand your self-awareness, how you leverage your power, how you can cope with stress to continue the work that you do because you're having impact for generations. And I share with them, my oldest daughter, and as soon as I started down the story about what, what our daughter's doing and where she's at, I got a lump in my throat. I got a tear in my eye. Emotion, yeah. Right. <clears throat> but I felt comfortable. I didn't have to suppress it. I didn't feel like people can't see this side of me. I had that emotion. I shared that with them in the moment because it felt right and it felt like it was going to punctuate and real. the importance of the yeah. It was. It was real. The feedback I got, what a humane presenter, real talk, so humble, you know, that resonated with people to help propel them on, go make your action plan, go put this to work for you and continue on finding how to, how to, you know, do the best work that you can in this field. Because I'm not just a guy up here who's knowledgeable, quote unquote, about the subject matter. I brought in my personal tie to it. And I felt comfortable doing that probably the, you know, the first time. That's awesome. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Oh, it does. 100%. And uh, Jimmy Martin one time said, well, actually, it was, it was with my episode. So, you know, now, again, like, we couldn't have, I couldn't have planned any of that, obviously. So, like, just by the way, I know you probably already know this, and maybe some people I might have shared this before, but, like, leading up to 200, I didn't know who, like, I, I felt like, you know, because 200 was, it's like a, you know, milestone of, you know, that's, that's a huge. That's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And... Leading up to it, I was like, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, who am I going to have? What am I going to have? I'm just like, I don't know, right? But then, then I, you know, a few weeks before we recorded that episode, which, like, by the way, like, I was, like, ready to record. I was ready to, like, book that next. I was ready to book that guest, whoever was going to be 200. Okay. And I was also, same thing. I was I was the type of person who I was like, ah, I, I, I didn't want to be, the, I didn't want to share the story. I, you know what I mean? Like, I've always felt like, like, just like you said, you got the lump in your throat. But like it was, it was good. But like previous to that, you'd probably get the lump in your throat, and you would just skip over it and keep going on with the presentation, right? That, that's probably, oh yeah, that's probably what you would have done. I swallowed it and moved on. Exactly, exactly, right. So 
you know, for me, for, you know, all those episodes up until 200, like it was the same thing. Like, you know, some things obviously I couldn't talk about, but then some things I just didn't want to talk about. Right. And, you know, it wasn't until then, obviously I had the AFib incident, my whole life completely changed. And then, you know, a couple weeks after that is when I was like, okay, well, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm sort of kind of getting back into the swing of things now. Still never booked that, that episode <laughs> that gets for 200. Right. And, and at that, at that time, and by the way, all this time, everyone's been asking me for all these years, like, when are you going to be on the podcast? When are you going to be a guest? When are you going to be a guest? I, I've had several people offer to, like, interview me as, like, you know, in my seat. And I've always just been like, eh, I'm just not, I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready. You know, there was a lot of not, I'm not ready, which sure. which is which is true, right? Uh, and then obviously decided to do it. Obviously, you know, the, the whole AFib thing, the timing of it just happened to work out, whether you want to, good or bad, however you want to look at it, right? Uh, good, good, you know, looking at it on this side of the, the fence now it's obviously all good right but um uh long story short this is really long-winded for me to get to the, the punchline <laughs> no, tell the story bro. right tell the story jimmy jimmy said to me he goes um and i can't remember if it was uh right before or right after we recorded it, it was i think it was actually right after and he said after this episode he goes if you he goes people if you thought people bought into you before this episode he goes wait until they see this episode boy, are they really going to buy into you now? And and it just, and it's exactly like what you were just saying about that connection, that connectivity and that vulnerability and that authenticity. Not that I've never been authentic, right? But I've never been as vulnerable, not even close to that day, right? But, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's like when you're, when you're willing to be very vulnerable, you know, in, in, in any type of public setting, whether it's, whether it's, you know, uh, speaking at, at a workshop or a conference or on a podcast or just, you know, even amongst coworkers, whatever it is, but you know, you're sort of like front and center stage and you're yeah. telling some type of personal story where it's super, super vulnerable. I think, you know, when you do share that, when you get that vulnerable and you share that, people then just buy into you so much more and they're then willing to, I'll say, take action. Like, you know, kind of similar to what you said. It's like, hey, this guy's not up here just, you know, bullshitting. He's not up here just spewing research or this or that. It's like, that's all good. But then when you can work in your real life experience and that vulnerability it's like how could people not want to take action after hearing that you know what i mean like how could you not have an impact after that like the impact now that if you thought you were having impact on people before this now it's like now you're probably like you're like ready to run through walls because you know like that people are immediately connecting to you just like i said like when i'm messaging that old friend he's like it sucked me in yeah and you know when, when he said it sucked me in that That to me, I took that as like, wow, this guy's like actually, people are paying attention now. Not that people weren't before, but when somebody says that, it's like, wow, like people are actually paying attention. Yeah. And it's like, wow, this actually means something. It's not, we're not just doing this just to do this. Like, and it's just, it's such a powerful thing. It really is. It's purposeful and and intentional, right? So I hope that's a great byproduct. I'll let you know how it goes after this (laughs) airs, right? Yeah. But, but, you know, you will, I'm telling you, you're going to get very similar feedback. Yeah, I really think you. Well, I, I really think so, you will. This is to me. This was a, uh, you know, and you mentioned it earlier in your explanation of hey, there's things that you want to do, there's things that you don't want to do, and sometimes there's that voice in your head that is telling you to do something, but you're avoiding it, and you think like, hey, you know, I brought this. Um, I wanted to talk about this, but I want to do this with you because I trust you. Because I, you know, with your show and your guests and how you care for people and how you bring people along, I wanted I wanted to have this conversation with you because it is real talk, on purpose. It's intentional, but there's this self talk that I've experienced where I just I avoid it. Still to this day, I just um, I avoided having this conversation for years. I av- I avoided having like having this. You telling this your story. I avoided, this, part, yeah. this part of your story. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I av- I avoided getting you know going through the VA. I avoided telling my part of the story. I avoided all this for what? You know for what? And I can't answer that question. I don't know why. You can insert a few things. Fear of you know dot 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 or eh, I I I, it, I don't want to put it out there because it's not my you know. It's not that big of a thing. You downplay things, but you avoid all this. You know, to what end? And I think as a as a business owner, you know, what's what's helped build my confidence, I took a big leap. But I still have those small things that'll show up. I have a, a colleague of mine who uh, was uh, in a cohort at Drexel behind me, and he has his own event, you know, planning, and he does his own CEO uh, retreats. 
And I'm thinking, geez, I, I wonder if he would, I wonder if he needs a facilitator. I wonder if he would want to work with me so we can partner up and, and provide even more value and products to, or services to who he serves. And it took me five days to decide to send the message. I'm like, why am I avoiding this? Why am I, well, the worst that he can say is no. So either on a micro scale or a macro scale, being what I'm, what I'm finding, what I'm discovering through this process is being open, being honest, being vulnerable, being true, being, being, you can insert all those icities that you want. Helps help. It's, it's both sides of the coin. It it's helps. empowering. It is. It empowers you to be confident and, and, and comfortable in yourself. And it's the people that you're wanting to serve. So if you know who you're wanting to serve, serve them the serve them the best way you know how. One of the questions I heard recently at, at a retreat I was at is, um, are you showing up as intended? Are you showing up as you're intended to? And if you asked me that eight, nine months ago, the answer was no, because I'm holding something back. Mm-hmm. I'm holding something in reserve. I'm not I'm not fully giving myself. I'm doing my best. I'm giving 100% action, but I'm not bringing my full self to here. So how would you show up? How would you show up as intended? And what's the difference? And that difference is, you know, overcoming those avoidant, you know, self-taught conversations. The difference is acknowledging what's going on and being real and connecting with people. And man, since I've started to do that more and more, momentum's building. And, and you're and you're building something big. You may not know what it is you're building yet. Right? <laughs> we, we said that before. I don't, I don't know what I'm building here, but I'm building <laughs> something. Built, it yeah, feels something. good. Yeah. Um, and it just feels good. It does. It does. What was it, you know, like, and I know, like, I forget, it was a little while back that you asked me, you know, and we started talking about you coming back on, but like, what was the moment for you that you were like, you, you finally said to yourself in your own head, like maybe before we had a conversation of you coming back on here, but what was it for you that was like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to share this. Like what, 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 what went through your head and like, what made you finally decide like, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this publicly somewhere now. Like I'm, I'm ready to do that. Like what went through your head? Yeah, it was um, years of the buildup, I think, of what's been going on and, and, and how I was handling things. And I really wanted to uh, bring more of myself to to the work that I'm doing. The I went to uh, the leadership retreat, executive retreat I went to, I think was right was, was right before that. So your episode sparked it. 200? 200. Yeah. Okay. It did. Okay. Because I said, except we've talked before, and you said, yeah. "Hey, there's things that I, you know, I want to talk about, but I'm not, I, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet." Well, finally, you did, and that was captivating, and not from a story standpoint, but from a personal standpoint of saying, "Geez, Bill's got the courage to open up, and it does take courage to do that. I should, I should do this. There's things that I, I want to acknowledge and I want to put out because I think it'll help people." And then the leadership uh, executive summit I went to, where we dove deep into. Who are you in service of? How are you showing up as intended? If you, if there was no risk, what it, what is it that you would be doing? And all of my answers came back is to serving others to develop, you know, leadership and team. I'm like, I'm I'm in this road I want to be in, but I have gotta let go of this this bag. Yeah, you weren't right like here. fully in it. Like you were like you were right. like probably like 90 percent of the way there. I right? was, I was. And this one thing of, geez, if my story can help somebody. If, if what I'm carrying and been silent about for, for so long can help somebody, let's get that out there. Selfishly, and I say selfishly, not in a negative way, but selfishly, if I can get comfortable telling my story, then I can get comfortable going deeper into the work that I do. I can get comfortable you know, sharing stories with people that will help connect and bring things together a lot easier. So part of it is building repetition. And building repetition, being comfortable talking about things. We, I think we were talking earlier, like, hey, if I if I brought this up, you know, before, it wouldn't be comfortable. If I if I if you ask me the same questions now, I'm more comfortable giving you the answers. And that's where I want to get to. I want to get more comfortable talking about, uh, you know, who I am and how I show up. And one of the other things that that um, was enlightening for me was, I asked people for feedback. Hey, how am I doing? How was how was the workshop? How was how was this? How was that? And like, oh no, you're, you're fantastic. I always get. I get very positive feedback, but there's a block in my head. There's a block in my head. Nah, you can't mean that. Or eh, are they are they being honest? Or eh. Um, and I had someone you know really break it down for me. Of here's not just you did a great job, but here's what you bring to the stage. Here's what you bring to your client. Here's what I've seen you bring 
when you lead and facilitate a workshop for people. And it clicked. If you say, see that in me, why don't I see that in me? If you see the value, if you see my authenticity, if you see my, my you know, realness come out, why can't I see that in myself? And I think part of the answer to that question is because I haven't acknowledged it, because I haven't spoke it, because I haven't you know, put it out in the world. And if I can put it out in the world, now, we're, now, we're, now I'm starting to see what you see, I'm starting to feel what you feel, and it's kind of just all culminating. Yeah, I think it goes back to exactly what you said before about the selfish thing. And, you know, oftentimes when you hear that word, it has like a negative connotation. But in these cases, in this, in these types of situations, it's the exact opposite. And I think, you know, you, you have to be selfish for you. Like you have to be. And I think, you know, I, I said something along those lines, like in my episode, like I had to do the things I had to do. I had to make the decisions that I had to make at that time to walk away from, you know, the, the, my day job at the family. I had to, I just had to just leave. Yeah. There was no, there was no negotiation. That was the exact word I even used. I said, this is non-negotiable. I'm out. Right. Like, yeah. and I think, you know, a lot of people might look at that like, wow, that's harsh. Well, if, if, if you were in the situation, you probably would do the same thing. Number one. But again, like, you know, I have no regrets and you know, I don't think I did anything wrong. I, I did what was best for me. And it's like, I had to do that. And all my life, I didn't do what was best for yeah. me. You know, and like, and you know, I, I hear the similar, you know, story with you. It's like, I haven't been doing what's best for me. And there's nothing, you know, even though we use the word selfish, there's nothing selfish about that. Like, I think everybody needs to get over that. Like, oh, like, oh, I should, you know, uh, it's, it's selfish of me to think this way. No, like you have to feel that way. Otherwise you're screwed for the rest of your life. Oh, 100%. You're screwed. You're done. It's 100%. Like literally, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Like you literally have to. At some point in your life, you know, you might come to a crossroads. Some people may, some people may not, right? But when you get to that point, it's like you literally just have to just say, screw everything else. I got to do what's best for me and figure this out. And then once you do that, man, it is like, it's like a whole nother world. I, I had a uh, experience, not not the same at all, but it was uh, it was an eye-opening experience for me. So my, my full-time job, which I, I still work at, there was an opportunity for a position that came open and I had a dozen people. Hey, I hope you apply. I hope you apply. I hope you apply. And I chose not to. I had a conversation with my wife. I had a deep level conversation with my wife about here's what this would mean if I apply and if I got selected, right? Cause I'm not presumptuous to say I'm a shoe in or anything, but I was competitive for the position. Um, but I didn't even put my, I didn't even, I didn't even put my name in. I didn't even apply for it. Because when I, when I kept coming back to where do I want to be, what do I want to do, who am I in service of, I enjoy the work that I do, I enjoy the organization I'm a part of, but over here on the other side of the table was my purpose, to help others, to help teams and leaders be at their best. And I want to pursue that through the work that I'm doing, which is about 15 to 20% of the work that I do in my daily job, but it's about 85 to 90% of the work that I do you know, in the, in the business that I've built. And man, I didn't look back. I had people that didn't understand. I had people that shook their head. I had people that, that stopped talking to me. Criticize you. Criticize me. Yeah. Couldn't get past it. Like what the hell's wrong with you? They just didn't get it. Yeah. But when you work in your purpose, when you live in your purpose, when you're, when your work is aligned with the value that you want to bring, when your work is aligned with, with being able to, to be in service of others, it doesn't feel like work to me. You know, it, it feels phenomenal. That's why I'll get on a plane and fly to California, you know, to, you know, for six hours to deliver a three hour workshop and take the red eye flight home. Because those three hours, when I'm in the moment, when I'm facilitating and working with people, helping them get better is worth, is worth every bit of it. And those three hours there are deep, focused, intentional, purposeful work. That's what it's all about. So you may, you made a decision that was on your path that, that was non-negotiable. I made a decision that was unexpected, but it, it led me to the path that I wanted to be on. And I didn't look back. There's goodness in that. I feel more fulfilled in the work that I do there. 
I mean, come on. Yeah, doing that, what's best for you. That's life. And and like you said, it, it initially it did. It felt selfish. Mm-hmm. It felt like I was yeah. You, you felt down. guilty. You probably felt guilty. 100 percent. Like right? I was letting people down. I was letting yep. I was letting teams down. I was letting people because people expected this of me. I yeah. should just I should just do what they expected me. And this right. is there. You know, I could be satisfied, satisfied, doing this. Could I be? Mm, good paycheck. Good work. Good benefits. You know, all those things that you would that you would have from mm-hmm. a job. Check 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 yep. check. Fulfilling, purpose filled, mm, yeah, right. maybe eh. fifty, maybe fifty, sixty yeah. percent. That's that's not what I want. That's yeah. not good enough for me. Right. I want more of 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 the positive side of that that work that I do. I want more connection with people. So, yeah, people just don't get it sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you do, and there's other people out there that do, and those that get it, man, that that's life changing. It is that's who you surround <laughs> yourself with because they get it. They get yeah. the ups and downs. They get yep. the, the roadblocks. They get the yeah the you know risk that you take. Mm-hmm. Oh, and some man. of those people may never get it. You know what I mean? Like some of those oh, yeah. people, like yeah, the people that may have criticized you or condemned whatever it was, like they may never get it. Like unless they have some type of life event, you know, similar or parallel to something that you know we've been through. Uh, but like until you kind of have one of those moments, like those people just may criticize you for the rest of your life. Like they'll probably think like, oh, remember when Will passed up on that? Remember when he didn't, you know, it's like, you know, and, but you're, you're so far gone that like, you yeah. don't even, you know, like obviously you think you share the story because it's a, it's a lived experience. And like, you're, you're, you're talking how you've grown from it where like some of these other people just may never get it. But, but again, like I, I think those are probably also the same people that also don't, don't understand and, and won't, you know, really ever make that decision of like, Hey, I got to do what's best for me here. And again, like some people, you know, just like you said, like I felt guilty in when I was making the decision that I made too. Like, you know, when I felt like how many people am I letting down here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I could literally probably say thousands if I, you know, that's not an exaggeration. I know most people are like, what the hell are you talking about? But, you know, like, again, I don't, I don't even, I don't even need to explain myself because I'm so comfortable in the decision that I made and, you know, who it affected, who it didn't to me, not, you know, not, 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 not being cynical about it. But again, like, it's just a matter of. I had to do what was best for me. And until you like have like a moment like that in your life, I feel like you may never really understand. And that's okay. I don't, I don't need, I don't need anyone to understand yeah. because you, you know who understands and you know, the only thing that matters is, is me. Yeah. And as, as long as I'm good with that, the rest of my life, I'll say with my wife, my kids, my family and my business, and everything else, we're good. It all falls in place. We're good. It? It's magic. How it yep. happens sometimes. Yep. So how did you, how did you, uh, you know, get over that roadblock of that feeling of, of guilt? Oh man, uh, talking about it, yeah. you know, talking about it with, you know, with various people, um, not many, you know, I, I keep a, a close circle sure. and I know I've shared some stuff with you yeah, over, over the too. years too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think it was just a matter of finding the right people to talk about it with, you know, like people that aren't going to judge you and people that are going to say, just do what's best for you, mm. you know? And just like you said, you know, you, you, you talk to Kelly, right? Like same thing. I, you know, I talked to Jess about some things and she said, whatever you do, I support you hundred percent. She's always said that. And that's just the way it's always been. And nothing else really matters, yeah. you know? And like, but again, I think, um, just having those conversations with the people closest to you that again, obviously depending on this, the decision you make of whatever situation you're in, it's obviously going to affect the, you know, those closest to you in some way. Right. Um, but again, I think, you know, having the conversations with the few people that opinions really matter to me, because, you know, the way I look at it too, sometimes is like, oh, I'm letting this down, I'm letting that down. But I'm like, I don't really care. Like when you really sit back and think about it, like those people's opinions, I don't give a shit. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. There's only a very few select few that really actually do matter. And, you know, you know, those, those, those are hard to, you know, come to, come to That's terms really, with. Right? Yeah. 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 Do I want to ask you the question? Right. Because I'm afraid, afraid you know, I don't know how it's going right. to break. I don't right. know how it's yeah. going to go, but you ask it. Right. Yeah. And that's the best part. You know, so shout yeah. out to Jess and Kelly, the best yeah. life advisors we probably ended oh. up with. Right. Oh yeah. But I had that conversation and she was very open and honest about, well, here's what I think you, you know, mm-hmm. the pros and cons and how I see things. She sees things differently than me. Yeah. Um, so she opens my eyes up, but she always asks, do you, do you really want, do you really want the answer? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Please. Yeah. yeah. And get, yeah. shoot it to me straight. Yeah. But I think it's also just being truthful with yourself yeah. too, right? Like again, that, that, that kind of comes back to like the selfish thing, right? Like, again, you can use the word selfish. Um, and you know, people might look at it, It's like, okay, you, you really sit down and, and, and say to yourself like, all right, if I make this decision, what's going to happen? If I make to go the other way, what's going to happen? It's like, am I going to be happy with that? I've always been the type of person that, you know, I make, I make decisions based on my gut. 
yeah. right? And if my gut's telling me do this, 99% of the time I'm doing that. Like, you know, like even if it may feel odd or awkward or selfish or whatever it is, but you know, my guts never let me down and you know, but also like therapy too, you know, seeing, you know, seeing yeah. a therapist, you know, speaking to somebody, about, I mean, that was also part of, you know, bouncing that off a therapist was also like, Hey, how do, what do I do here? How do I approach this? What do I say? Like, what do I, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that, 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 you know, when you say like, who did you, like, how did, who'd you talk to or how did, yeah. that was obviously all part of it too. Um, you know, and I have no shame in, in, in admitting that because all that has got me to where it is today, you know, like just being able to have those, those open and honest conversations you know, with, with people that you can confide in, like, I'm telling you, man, it goes, and I know, you know, I'm, you know, but like, there's a lot of people that don't know, like how, how far that could really take you. It makes a huge difference. And there's, there's, you know, things that you can do on your own to try, you know, the, the, the idea of getting thought from mind out, right. And you can go, you, it's a deep level conversation, probably for a different day on where does that thought come from? Is that, that the universe? I'll say this for it, part right, three, right, part three. Part three. Right, yeah. <laughs> But getting that thought out, either through reflective writing or through talking or, uh, you know, talking to somebody else or whatever it may be, it helps. It helps the, the process of, you know, head to hand, you know, uh, connection and, and seeing things. Uh, you know, one of the things I picked up on from this, this summit and the guy was a, uh, he's a he was a musician. He's a great guy, does a lot of work with kids. Uh, he said, hey, try to give your, he said, anybody give themselves a compliment shower? And we were all like, what the heck is a compliment shower? What are you talking? Like, I showered. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Do yeah I something saw, in the faucets or I what? Like, what, I, there, I don't, yeah. what setting yeah. is that? I didn't, yeah. I didn't, you know, anyhow. yeah, hot colds in the middle. Yeah. He says, yeah, just just do this. You know, tomorrow morning when you're you know getting ready for the day, look in the bathroom mirror and set a timer for two minutes. And for two minutes straight, speak out loud. Give yourself compliments. Oh, I, I challenge you right now. Try that. That sounds very difficult. It's weird. It is weird. But man, it's 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 there's a potency to that because mm -hmm. here you are having a conversation with yourself. Now I've done this. Now I'll, I'll I'll say that you know you can call me a weirdo what you want. Here's what it did for me, was it set myself I set myself up for my day with positivity first and foremost. I had to acknowledge I had to acknowledge the positive traits I saw in myself. But I had to do it in a in a manner where I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm hearing the words. I'm not just quickly having a thought pass through. So think about that. The power you have of looking back and saying, you know, I am smart, I'm strong, I'm successful, I'm open to new opportunities, I'm open to new potential, I'm this, I'm this, I'm, I'm good this. looking, I got the I'm best hair. Guys. Yeah, I saw I said, hey, good morning, handsome, <laughs> yeah. like the hairdo, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Wait, and you can ha have fun, have fun with it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be serious. Sure. You start, you, yeah. yeah or you know, it could be, you know. I'm a singer, whatever. I like to sing, I like to dance. Again, I like, I like music. So I'm bebopping around yep. doing this. And it DMX, felt so and weird. some DM, right. DMX. Yeah, you know? yeah. X gonna give it to you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Will's <laughs> gonna give it to you. Boom, 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 boom. And yeah. in the morning, I'm wiping yep. the steam off and yep. I'm, I'm yeah. jamming out. Yep, just a little enough to see your face. Yeah. By the end of it, you're gonna have a smile on your face. You're gonna have a smile on your face. You're gonna hear positive things about yourself from yourself. So the power of self talk it cuts both ways. It does. You can you can pull yourself down and bring yourself back and avoid doing things. And we don't very often practice positive self talks. So I don't think we ever do. No, I, I thought <laughs> it was the weirdest thing that. So everyone the next day was like, "Hey, did you give yourself a compliment shower?" And you felt kind of icky saying the term. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. what, you know, what are you doing? But you're like, "Yeah, I did." What was your experience? He said it was odd at first, but man, by the end of it, I was laughing and smiling. I was goofing around. I was having a good time. So who wouldn't want to start their day upbeat with positivity? Right. And we talk about practicing gratitude mm -hmm. and 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 what am I thankful for and and giving gratitude to others. Sometimes we got to do that for ourselves. If you're serving others, if you're giving to others constantly, how are you refueling? Right. How are you putting goodness back in your tank? Mm -hmm. And it, it may not take much. It may be a two minute ritual you have in the morning of positive self talk. Have that conversation. Say it out loud, and it it, it resonates different. Yeah. No. I, yeah. And what you said about you know how do we you know how do we refuel ourselves? I mean that's that's one of the things that you know. I think every, everyone, you know, I, I've lacked, I lacked that, you know, forever, you know, until I started really understanding, you know, myself more and, and talking and everything like that. But again, like, just like you said, like, you know, n hardly anybody ever probably does that yeah. no matter what you do. Right? right. Like, like, you know, what are you doing to fill your cup? Right. Like, 
Yeah. You know, what, you know, some people may say, oh, I have a hobby. I do this and that. Like, okay, like that's good too. But like, you know, how often do we all probably say to ourselves like, ah, oh, I suck. I suck at that. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, like, uh, I'm an idiot. I, I say it all the time. Constant. I still, I still do. And like, I, you know, I'm t- trying, trying, trying to, you know, change it up a little bit, but like, you know, like if you screw something up, even just, just something small, goofy, like, ah, I'm an idiot. Why'd I do that? You know, like you don't realize the impact that even just those little small, like, you know, kind of going back to, well, I'll tie it back in with the, with the PTSD, like, and you said about the, you know, a hundred cuts or a thousand cuts, or whatever it is, yeah. like every, you know, you call yourself an idiot, you know, you know, you don't think anything about it, but guess what? You do that a couple once or twice or a couple times a day and do that for however many years you, you're alive. You start think, to believe it. Think about that. Oh yeah, you start. You start. Yeah, you start to believe it. Becomes, it. It, it, it becomes it becomes the your reality, and you don't even realize it. Right. You start to label yourself like oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Oh, I'm horrible at this. Yeah. I'll never be good at that. I can't do that. Right? I can't do anything. I can't yeah. do anything right. You know. Like, yeah. So if if you could if you could take thirty minutes of your day to to paddleboard to sauna to ice pod to exercise to do whatever it is that you that you can do, it's been proven to increase your your energy levels to increase your 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 serotonin to increase those those good chemicals running through your body and it saves you an hour of misery post argument or an hour of self-deprecating conversation it saves you from that who who wouldn't invest time in themselves yeah but it's this label of oh it's selfish time for myself i should right. be giving to others yep if that if that hour to you know 45 minutes to an hour of your day can help save you and bring you back and keep you, you know, fueled up. What would you, what would you pay to do it? Right. You know, sometimes yeah. it's, it's, it's free. Yeah. And I think the other, one of the other biggest things is, is maybe not wait, wait until you have some type of crisis in yeah. your life. Preventive. You know? use, it, yes. use it as a preventative. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and again, I, I know it's, it's very hard to, it's very hard in the moment, how, whoever you are, no matter what you got going on, good, bad, or indifferent, like, and I know it's very hard in the moment, you know, with ever, you know, with how busy life is to be able to sort of take a step back in a moment, in any moment and do those things. But, you know, again, coming from somebody who's on, I'll say the other side of it. And now you are too, I feel like, yeah. um, I feel like we could explain it and help people understand really like the value of it and, you know, like no, like you really should take a moment to stop and chill and pause and do something, do something for yourself, like, you know, and stop feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be selfish doing this. Like, no, like you need to, because guess what? If you don't, you're going to go on for 18 years, yeah. somebody like you, you're going to go on for 18 years struggling, kind of maybe realizing a little bit that you're struggling, but maybe also not. And guess what? If you didn't ask for the help, who knows where, where you'd be? Oh, well, Sure. You know, sure. and, and again, like, don't wait for the, don't wait for the crisis. Now, again, you can't, you can't really, you know, predict if you're going to get into an accident or, so, or something crazy, right? You can't really predict that per se. But, but again, like, I think the preventative of it, you know, the preventative maintenance, think of it just like you're changing the oil in your car. Like, are you going to drive your car a hundred thousand miles and not never change the oil? Like, yeah. why, why, why would you do that? Right? Like, so why would you go through your whole life without ever taking a step back and either talking to somebody or, or talking to yourself? Right? Yeah. And say like, hey, what do I really want? What does Bill want? What does Will want? You know, like, what do I want? And it's 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 weird to like even say that, and it, it feels weird to you know even even now saying that not, saying that out loud. Like, well, what what do I really want? You know, and when you when you finally have that honest conversation with yourself, man, your life your life changes. Yeah, I bet it really does. It does. It does. It really, I it's can sit here with you today saying I've experienced that. And if I wasn't a believer in it before, I absolutely am now. Yeah. I haven't gone through that, you know, that experience. Yeah. It's, it's everything, man. I mean, you know, I think people don't realize maybe how unhappy they actually are. You sure, know, until... you carry it. And you, you said it earlier, like, hey, on the, on the surface, and I was, your measures of success, right? Good yeah. job, you know, uh, cordial at work, uh, you know, friends, family, this, that, you know, all of the positive, uh, you know, things They're that you checking see. all the boxes. Sure. But in the background, in the shadows, in the places you don't see me is where I'm I'm falling yeah. to pieces. Yep. But I don't let you see that, right? Mm-hmm. I don't let you see that 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 piece. Yeah, the that vulnerability. Side. The vulnerability, and that's where a lot of people are. Is you, you may not know who's struggling or what they're carrying with them because they ha- they are very good. Yeah. At that outside persona. Oh, 100 percent. Everybody is like, no matter what, whatever it is you struggle with, you you cope and find a way, and you do so well at hiding it because, well, 
you, that's what, just what you do. You have to. Like that's that's what you, you think do. You have to. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. It just it's like it's actually it's almost like sort of like a instinct, like almost you know second nature. You just you just do that. Sure. So well, yeah, I think we're built that way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know defense mechanism. Right. Yeah. And it's just you know we're sort of hardwired that way, whether you want to look at it as good or bad thing. But again, I think it's just a matter of taking the like we say we said that the preventative measure, you know, to do the things that you need to do to keep yourself in check. Yeah. Because it, uh, you know, everyone, everyone, everyone lacks that. I think there's just so many more people that, that there's probably people that are listening right now and are probably actually going to be mad and maybe turn this off at this point already. And I'm sorry if they did, but if you didn't, and if you made it this far, first of all, th- thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but again, I think, you know, th- you know, the people that, that are going to listen to this and say like, or they're going to think that, oh, we're, they're going to say to about us, like, oh, they're idiots. They're crazy. They're, they're, oh, they're selfish or whatever. That's the person you have in it. You have the issue. It's a, it's a you problem. Sure. And like, that's when you know you have a problem. So if any of this that we said, like pissed you off today, like, you know, listeners I'm talking about, like if this struck some type of chord and you're, you're, you're mad or you're angry, you're thinking like, oh, that's bullshit. I don't need to do that. Well, then that's, that's the first sign that you definitely need something. Yeah. You Ask yourself something. why. Yeah, like wh- why, what do do you, I, why do I think yeah. that's bullshit? Why do yeah. I why do I think I don't need this? Right. Or, well, yeah, because there's there's why something I, else. Why why is this, why am I having this reaction to this conversation? Right, that's, right. That's yeah, and, right. and the reason you're having the reaction is because there's something deep down rooted inside yeah. that that's actually bothering you, and you and, and you may not even know it. You may not even know what it is, but but again, like that's that's I think a for sure sign that you just need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. As 100%. the cool kids say, that's right. Chickadee, chickadee. <laughs> 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 yeah. So. Dude, this was this was this was incredible. This, this felt good. This, this was great. How's it feel now? Uh, like a, a weight off my shoulders. No, yeah. it, feel, it feels really good to have an in depth conversation and kind of get some of these things out on the table. I know you've mentioned it before, like uh, you know, podcast hosts or uh, you know, quasi therapists. Yeah, we are. We are. We are. <laughs> yeah, way. but that's that just goes to show powerful conversations. I tell my kids all the time: words have meaning. You know, and they, they also have emotion attached to them. So this. Uh, this was super helpful to me. Hopefully it's helpful to somebody out, out there who's listening or watching at this point in time. So I'm sure it will thank be. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So if anyone, um, you know, I, I know they're, you know, they're going to want to see your face again. So if anyone wants oh. to see your face, hear from you, talk to you, where do they need to go? Yeah. So a few, a few places, LinkedIn, I'm big on uh, Dr. William Ramey, um, on Instagram, leadership decoded pod. If you want to, you know, catch up with, uh, with the show and where that's being posted also on, on the, on the stacks YouTube channel. Right. And then for me, drwilliamramey.com, brand new website. If you're interested in uh, team leadership development, keynote speaking, finding out a little bit about more of me and my story, you can go there as well. And uh, maybe next time, part three, we'll do it on the paddle boards, maybe. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, so, on the lake. We'll, on the lake. Yeah. I, I hashtag guess. on the lake. We'll, ch- we'll change the name of the show. Hashtag to, on the yeah, lake. Hashtag on the lake. On the lake. A lot of splashing in that one, <laughs> I think. Yeah, you yeah. got waterproof. Uh, yeah, I don't know if to check. We'll have to check with Eric after this. We'll see <laughs> if uh, see if we could do it. But it's, it sounds like a good idea right now. I think so, too. Summertime especially. Yeah, we'll Yeah, definitely. There. Yeah. Um, what do you do in the winter, by the way? Now, that I'm just thinking about that now. So you paddleboard, like, what do you, what do, you yeah, do? so wintertime. I, I just thought of this. This yeah, is very no, I, silly. I, but I actually, I actually like to run in the winter. Okay. So I do, wow. I do a little bit more of the outdoor running in the cold weather because I hate being hot. Mm. You know, so I do running in the winter and uh, pair that up with, with time in the sauna. Nice. Running in the winter. That's tough, man. I'll oh, bundle up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a lot of credit, man. That, 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 that it's, it's tough to do. You know, I, I like I say, because like I, I, I used to be a big, like in high school, I was a big runner. I ran track and cross country. And I always remember like, you know, in the off seasons and stuff, obviously be winter. And it was always, you know, when you run outside, it's different. Like you get that cold. I'm a cold weather runner. Yeah. See, I, I never really was. Yeah, I've gotten, um, I've come back with just, you know, the nosebleeds and yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure obviously with enough training, um, you could, you know, make do, but, uh, but it's hard. That's hard. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's also probably hard for people who probably can't stand the extreme heat and, and air any type of heat, but it's probably just as hard, you know, the hot versus the cold. Oh, but, sure. Yeah. It's yeah. what you can acclimate to well, yeah. and what you, what you're willing to tolerate, I guess. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, uh, and like I said, part three, maybe we'll do it on the paddle on boards the, and the let's not wait two years. Yeah, I know, right? There's uh, so much going on. Yeah, I know. That's the other thing. I think, you know, again, if anyone takes anything away from this conversation, I think maybe it's also kind of like we're saying now, like maybe live a little more in the moment, which I've been guilty of not doing myself. Oh, same. You know, li- live a little more in the moment, you know, try to, you know, just, just, you know, 
I've, I've always been one who has never been satisfied or content, right? But that's like, I'll say the entrepreneur in me, sure. right? But In the right context, that's okay. Right, exactly. But sometimes that harms you yeah. in, in, in certain parts of your life. And so if anyone takes anything away from this conversation, it's, um, you know, uh, you know, have that conversation with yourself, have it with somebody else if you have to, uh, do whatever you need to do to get yourself over that hurdle and uh, get the help that you maybe that, that you need and bring light to, you know, uh, mental health, like, like PTSD. And I don't want to go down the list of all the other ones. But I think I, I just think it's I think it's also important. I think everybody struggles with something to a degree. Um, yeah. A lot of people will never admit that. And hey, I hope one day you can. Um, but uh, just know that once you can talk about it, that there's so much more to life Absolutely. beyond it. So Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Bill. Dr. Will Ramey on the Stacks, the MPP studio. Thanks for joining me. If you want to see more on the Stacks content, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash on the Stacks podcast or search the hashtag on the Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn.